going from one foot and then bent knees onto another foot. And it's hard not to make that look kind of spastic. Just, just telling it like it is. Hi guys, welcome forward. What better way to get in the spirit of Halloween than to review the most iconic early 2000s dance movie? I mean, it's just... It's just the obvious thing to do. Today I'm going to be reviewing the film and at the end of the video I'm going to be actually learning one of the combinations from my favorite scene from the movie. I have been told by uh, lay people, non-dance people, that it does not have the same intrinsic value if you are not a dancer, but if you were a dancer growing up around the year 2000. I mean, this film was just, it was it was the thing to do, the thing to watch, and I might venture to say that that's still true. Also, I do have some anecdotes about some of the film's stars that are personal from my own life, if you're excited about that. And if you want to see me do more reviews like this, make sure to subscribe, comment, press buttons, say words, do all the things. Let's get started. So, Center Stage is a movie about uh, this girl, Jodie Sawyer, who we're led to believe in the movie does not have great dance technique. I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't think they established that very well because uh, the girl who actually plays Jodie Sawyer is good at dancing. So, you know. Amanda Scholl, if you're out there, I know that you were acting, and I know that it took a lot of effort for you to pretend you didn't have turnout, so, uh, good job. But also, I could tell you had turnout, so, you know. Jodi is the main character, and she has two roommates when she arrives at, I think they call it the School of American Ballet? No, they can't call it the School of American Ballet, because that's a real thing. It's based off of the School of American Ballet, which is the school that feeds into New York City Ballet in real life. This is not in the movie. What is the name of the school? Oh, okay, it's called American Ballet Academy. I actually had to look this up. It's called American Ballet Academy. And I thought that was funny at the time when I watched it because I was going to a summer intensive called American Academy of Ballet. There are only so many different ways that we can interchange these words and make them sound different. But they managed to find one that I guess nobody had done yet, so... The name of the school is American Ballet Academy. Anyway, Jody has these two roommates. Uh, one of them is played by Zoe Saldana. Uh, her name is Eva. And the other is played by Susan May Pratt, queen of uh, alternative teen movies of the early 2000s. Eva's really cool, she's kind of a badass, she's like... She's kind of, I don't, I don't want to say she's rebellious because she does, she does show up to class and like do the work, but she's got a little bit of an attitude. And Maureen is like the prodigy of the school. She's been there forever. Her mom works at the office. She's, she's the one everybody looks to and, and expects to do well after they all graduate. Needless to say, or maybe I do need to say it, I related uh, I did not relate strongly to Jody, and I did not relate strongly to Maureen. The one that I related to the most was Eva. Um, not because I was so hardcore and cool. No one thought I was cool. No one thought I was cool. Uh, but she just, you know, she's a little sassy. Uh, she, um, she had kind of like a, a tenuous relationship with so I'm not actually going to recap the whole film for you because, well, I just looked it up and apparently the Rotten Tomatoes rating for this movie is 42%. I will say, Roger Niebert gave it... Ooh, I always thought it was Roger and Ebert. It's just Roger Ebert. I always thought it was two guys. I don't know why I thought that. So because it uh, apparently <laughs> is not very good, I'm not going to recap the whole film for you. It's a pretty typical 
early 2000s dance movie plot. If you've seen one of them, you've basically seen all of them. But suffice it to say, there are these three girls, they go through a lot, and then there are like guys too. There are guys in the film, they are not the center point of the film, there's not a whole lot of plot that's hinging on their storylines, but there are some of the most famous dance stars of that decade in this movie. And two of those are two of the guys that I was just about to totally gloss over. One is Sasha Radetsky, uh, he plays Charlie, and Ethan Stiefel, who plays Cooper Nielsen. I feel like they literally just took Ethan Stiefel's name and they were like, how do we make this sound like the same name but also different? Cooper Nielsen in this movie is giving very uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov in Turning Point vibes, like super talented, somewhat seasoned dancer, part of the big company in the movie who is essentially a cad through most of the film, but is like forgivable because he's super talented, right? Because that's how real life works, right? We do have some kind of cameos of uh, people who were actually big stars. I think uh, they have Jillian Murphy, who is Ethan Stiefel, I was about to call him Cooper Nielsen. Jillian Murphy, who is Ethan Stiefel's real-life wife, is in the movie. She was a big dancer, but she's not really featured prominently, so if you guys didn't know that Jillian Murphy's in that movie, she is in that movie. The last big name who's in the movie who is featured prominently, she is her own character, is Julie Kent. So, these three, these three big ones, who were all stars of American Ballet Theater. In real life, Julie Kent, Ethan Stiefel, and Sasha Rudetsky, I met all of these people at auditions or classes that I did. We're gonna talk about that instead of, instead of going further into the synopsis of this film, which I am told by Rotten Tomatoes is a bad film. The first one I ever met was Ethan Stiefel, I was doing an audition for the North Carolina School of the Arts, um, which is a college, but it also has a high school division, and that's what I was auditioning for. I think I actually saw him twice because I auditioned once for the high school, which I got in, and once, once for college, which I got in, and I don't think I went either time, but he was very nice, very soft-spoken, kind of... Um, kind of elegant in a way, you know, like he had this like a little bit, a little bit boho elegant dance teacher. He gave a nice class. I remember being so thankful that the point combinations he gave weren't like silly. Sometimes when men give point auditions, I'm like, bro, what? It's like, why did you have to make it so awful? Why did you have to make it so needlessly hard? And I think I even, maybe I'm making this up now and I'm just giving him like way too much credit, but I think I even remember him saying something like, um, yeah, you know, we don't need to scare you guys or anything. We just need to see what you can do. And then he gave like a very nice technical combination on point. I don't even think the point part was that long because we had a modern part of the audition anyway. Super nice guy. The next person of these three that I met was Sasha Radetsky. He was giving class, I want to say at Steps on... at Steps on Broadway, or maybe... no. Scratch that. Scratch it. It was Broadway Dance Center. I took a class from him at Broadway Dance Center, and I don't know if I knew that he was teaching. I think I just happened to show up and Maybe he was like subbing or something and he walked in and I was all, oh hey, this guy. You got the impression that he was kind, you know? Just uh, very, again, understated. And I remember him talking up this kid who was in class who was, I say a kid, he was probably my age at the time, but it was a young male dancer. And at the beginning of the class, like, and there were like, 
you know, maybe eight of us, and most of it was like adult ballet students. Like none of us had any clout. There was no reason for him to like need to talk this kid up, but he was just doing it. I think to to like again, like kind of make this kid feel good. And he was like, "This is this is so and so," and he was just in the center stage movie, the new center stage movie, because they've made two since the first one. So I think he was maybe in number three, I want to say, at this point. And he was like, this kid's about to blow up. You know, he's great. And he was just talking this kid out before class, and the kid was kind of like embarrassed and shy about it. But I just thought, yeah, man, that's, you know, that's what it should be. It doesn't need to be this like, horrible competitive black swan business all the time you know he was really nice so that was my experience with Sasha Radetsky aka Charlie and then the third uh, person that I met was Julie Kent at <clears throat> the audition for American Ballet Theater's collegiate summer intensive and I want to say that all the summer intensive people were auditioning together, but if you were auditioning for the, the like the college level program that maybe you just had an extra sticker. I don't know, there was like a lot of us there though. It must have been, I feel like we got divided up into rooms of 70 or 100 people in a room. It was a lot of people in a room because there were like 400 people at the audition and it was at ABT Studios, which is the one and only time I've been at ABT Studios and I was like, this is dope. And I don't think she taught class. I think she just gave a speech at the beginning of class and just so poised, like very Margot Fontaine essence while still being American and obviously not putting on a fake British accent. Really cool lady. I don't think she gave class, but she kind of set a really nice tone before the audition started. And I remember that audition being very nice. Um, I seem to recall that I like made friends with these two boys in that audition and you don't really talk in ballet auditions. So it's kind of rare to be friendly with other people in a ballet audition because it's just not set up like that. My takeaways from meeting the three of those people was that they were kind of similar to their characters, honestly, like, not in the sense that Ethan Stiefel was, like, a player, like Cooper Nielsen is in the movie, but very, um, very casual, cool elegance about him. Sasha Radetsky, much like Charlie, very friendly, amiable, understated kind of guy, and Julie Kent, just classy AF. No, nothing bad to say. That is my personal experience with the stars of Center Stage. We're gonna get into the action and my favorite scene. Okay, here we go, you guys. We're gonna learn uh, the combination. And I don't actually know where the combination starts because the scene, the scene kind of starts in the middle of the combination. Like they fade into the music and then they're coming into the scene. So we're just gonna guess. Um, we're gonna guess. And I'm gonna start it off with this Ashape they do. So we're starting off Ashape and retire to the back down and then we're doing devil pay all sagant tombe devil pay all sagant side tombe step onto it pique arabesque 
one and two, pare bore. And then I think they do an awesome way. Yeah, they do an awesome way. Yeah. So, breaking it down. We're doing echepe a la seconde, plie, retire to the back, down, développe écarté, tombe, coupe, switch, pique arabesque, relevé arabesque, tombe, pas de bourré, assemblé. So, we're doing our pique arabesque, right? Then we have to plie, we're staying in the arabesque, which means this leg's staying in the back. Um, but we're changing our arm position. So, in theory, what we want to do is see both shoulders and then see both shoulders from the back before we rotate around. Now that's kind of weird. I, I don't even think it's a move that looks that hard, but it's just a little weird to be like, this has to look like a really good pose, and then you switch while staying on one leg to another thing that has to look like a really good pose. So, we're just gonna do a little test run, see how that goes. That's what they did. That's what they did. 